So we're out here at a Tallahassee water reclamation facility, basically a wastewater treatment plant, which is an unlikely place to see wildlife, but in fact it's a favorite spot for birders. Um, there's shorebirds out here at the holding ponds, uh, ducks, uh, there was even a snowy owl once. Uh, the ducks were particularly important to Bourne because I saw a mallard with a broken wing and its mate just still hanging out and surviving in the holding ponds. And it made me really think about the life that exists in places you might not expect and how we coexist in urban spaces with wildlife. And so there's a scene in Bourne that speaks to that, that, that uses the mallard that I saw out here. In Bourne, I'm really talking about how we interact with wildlife and animals uh, in an urban space and, and what that means in terms of how animals have adapted to that space uh, because of climate change. Uh, the fact of the matter is the landscape's changing, even the pristine wilderness is changing, and we have to come to grips with the fact that we are going to have more kind of unexpected eruptions of life in spaces that we think of as human dominated. So I'm standing here in front of the St. Mark's uh, Lighthouse in the refuge on the Gulf Coast. Uh, and this was uh, the center, basically, of the inspiration for Annihilation, the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy. It's a fairly unique uh, ecosystem. It was something that had been on my mind for a while. I've, I've hiked here now for 20 years. That's how long it took to have it kind of go into my subconscious and come out as story. Uh, when I knew the place so well, like the back of my hand, that I didn't need to think about it when I, when I started writing about it. The, the landscape here is really very personal to me. Not only is the place directly inspirational in my work, it's really important to my process because that's when the best ideas come to me. And I do a lot of thinking about writing out here, and I do it because it's very peaceful. So Bourne is set in a ruined city of the future where a woman named Rachel finds a bit of discarded biotech that she calls Bourne. And Bourne grows, Bourne becomes intelligent, uh, Bourne may have been meant to be a weapon. And so he creates this crisis for Rachel and her boyfriend and for the city because he changes the dynamic of power in the city. And it's a place where scarcity is a real, real issue, just like it is in some cities today. Something that I think is important to me in conveying in my books, which is a, a real experience of nature and a real experience of the way that we negotiate relationships with the environment, with animals, and with each other in that context. Um, you know, I don't think that, you know, this place here, for example, is not political in a sense. It's even more political now. It's kind of a contested space. Uh, especially because of, of Trump being in power, but also because we have a governor who won't even let his administration use the term climate change. And so by default, just by writing about a place like this, your work becomes political. There's a wealth of life and biodiversity by those standards that um, I think is really important for us to think about when it comes to ecology. So Bourne, the difference in Bourne is it's not talking about pristine wilderness, it's talking about life in the broken places life in the places where there is contamination, but it's still worth preserving. It's been a long time since I've been out here at dusk. It really is nice.